The Chesapeake Bay, North America's largest estuary, was once the world's most productive. For more than 30 years, scientists have reported the bay's declining health. Vast areas of the bay are simply called dead zones, where the bottom of oxygen-starved muck covers every living thing. Algal blooms play a perilous role in this problem. However, a new group wants to turn the problem of algae into a solution. The Chesapeake Algae Project, or CHAP, is an integrated research approach using diverse natural communities of algae for algae-based environmental remediation and energy production. Funded by an initial monetary contribution from Statoil, the project is focused on the use of substrates on which to grow and harvest the algae. We're developing prototypes uh, for growing algae and harvesting uh, directly in, in open water so you can take advantage of the natural wild communities that are growing in a, in a local environment. Our goals are, are very much twofold. Um, use algae to remediate our waters as well as to produce value-added co-products uh, such as biofuel. Such work was pioneered by Dr. Walter Aidey of the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. Aidey is an algal ecologist and is the inventor of the algae turf scrubber, or ATS, a flowway system for scrubbing nutrients from polluted waters and refreshing it with oxygen. ATS is a land-based nutrient reduction system which is commercially available through Hydromentia, and a focus of CHAP is to utilize ATS as a research tool to develop in-water systems. This is the uh, algal flowway at BIMS. It takes 30 seconds for the water to flow from one end down to the other end, so what you get at the other end is clean water that goes back into the river and a bunch of algae that once a week can be scraped off uh, and extracted for fuel. Some of them will get caught in the, the gaps in the screen, so we'll start to adhere to the screen. And once we have a community of algal cells that are adhered to the screen, then others, they'll, they'll start to multiply and others will attach also. These are samples that were collected from the flowway. It's the lipid production of our algae ranges from about 2 to 9 percent. Instead of actually needing to fertilize the algae, we're using the algae to remove fertilizers that have been put in the waters by land-based crops. Uh, what we're trying to do is figure out how to transfer the, the onshore technology, these flowways here, figure out how to transfer that out in the open water. This is essentially engineering prototyping. That's, well, we scraped both of these, didn't we? This is going to be good. This is like more than five, five grams per meter squared per day, probably. Just this stuff that you don't think is very much. If you don't scrape it down, then it grows really fast. This is good. Uh, we want like a factory. Well, I know, I know. The University of Arkansas, we are employing a two-stage fermentation go from alkyl-derived sugars to butanol. The system that we're going to, I'm going to show you today is the algal raceway. We use it to grow algae. Um, the main thing that we're trying to accomplish with this system is see how the addition of hollow fibers with carbon dioxide pumping through the fibers enhances the growth rate of the algae. We, we're trying to use algae, which is a nuisance. The problems that it causes have to do with the depletion of oxygen in the, in the water that kills fish and so forth. That problem can be turned into a fuel supply. We've computed what it would actually take to do uh, a significant um, energy source, maybe not the whole 400 barrels a second that we need here in America or 1,000 for the world, but some significant fraction. And we've computed that, that you could draw a box in the open ocean. If you wanted to do it in one place, you would never do this. That box would only be about 50 miles by 50 miles, or maybe 50 by 60. If you took that box and spread it out as a thin strand and kind of wound that around coastal zones worldwide, you'd almost not even see it. We firmly believe that this is an economically feasible solution. It can't be ethically or morally driven. It has to be economically driven. We want to harness the, the billions of years of uh, evolution that algae have undergone.
This is America's energy future. <laughs> That's right. We've all had turns participating in the harvest, and just everybody is very excited.